It's more than three years since I first blogged about the legal remedies available for those suffering from the menopause. At that time, there wasn't much in terms of case law to report on, but it was clear that those suffering from menopause symptoms were in the age group which made up a large proportion of the workforce. Well, feeling vulnerable about sharing my own personal story, I recognised that employers should be made aware of the risks that ignoring the menopause could have on their business. Not just employment claims, but a failure to provide adequate support can lead to problems with retention, recruitment and productivity. Now, empowered by the positive response from clients and colleagues, I hosted a series of roundtable discussions to find out how employers from a range of sectors were tackling menopause in the workplace. From those discussions, it was clear that the lack of knowledge and understanding of the condition was the biggest hurdle for menopausal people. Our roundtable discussions also formed the basis of an insights paper we produce for clients, which provides top tips on managing the menopause in the workplace, as well as outlining the relevant legal protections. We aim to lead by example, and I am proud of the journey that Bernice Paul embarked on to educate and train our staff. This led us to become the first menopause-friendly accredited employer in Scotland and the first law firm in the UK to hold this status. As an employer, we're committed to creating a culture where everyone is able to reach their full potential. But in order to do that, we need to know who works for us and the barriers they might face. Women over 50 are the fastest growing segment of the workforce and law is now a predominantly female profession. When we started this project, stats were showing that one in four women suffer serious symptoms as a result of the menopause and that one in six women felt the menopause had a negative impact on their work. At Burness Paul, we have over 60% female employees and over 40% of those are aged 40 and above, many of whom are or will be experiencing symptoms of perimenopause or menopause now or in the not too distant future. Gender inequalities already exist in the legal profession, particularly at more senior levels, and it was increasingly clear to us, not only from a well-being perspective, but also from an equalities perspective, that more needed to be done to raise awareness, reduce stigma and support women going through what can be a very challenging time in their personal and professional lives. Mandy and I had discussed menopause many times, and given her team are always way ahead of the game, it was no surprise that this was also something they were championing for clients. Now, in terms of legal protection, it's not too difficult to see how the protections currently afforded to employees under the Equality Act 2010, in particular in respect of disability, sex and age, can be utilised to protect those suffering from symptoms of menopause. And indeed, this has been confirmed by case law. However, a hotly debated topic is whether the legal framework is fit for purpose. Should menopause be a separate protected characteristic? Now, the uniqueness of the condition and lack of understanding of the breadth and depth of the symptoms that can impact functionality led to a call for separate legislation. Unfortunately, the government's response to the report prepared by the Women and Equalities Committee means it's unlikely that this will happen anytime soon. In addition to employment law, there's some protection afforded by health and safety legislation, which obliges employers to carry out risk assessments. This should include identifying measures to mitigate against the effects of those experiencing symptoms of the menopause. Regardless of whether or not menopause is ultimately made a protected characteristic, the increased awareness of the rights of menopausal people coupled with a lack of employer support is leading to more and more tribunal claims citing menopause. Any employer who fails to educate his workforce and provide support to menopausal people should brace themselves for tribunal action. An important point which is often overlooked by employers is that the lack of support for menopausal people could also be contributing to their gender pay gap. If talent is lost at the latter stage of an individual's career, this will also likely increase an organisation's gender pay gap at a time when most businesses are working hard to close the gap.